The Logitech G Cloud is quite a unique product that sits at the top of a new category of handheld gaming devices. You see, unlike other handhelds, it doesn't need to let off steam with cooling fans, for example, like a Steam Deck. And with the Logitech G Cloud, you're not locked into a brand specific game catalog as you would be with a Nintendo Switch. It is a dedicated cloud streaming handheld that can run AAA games efficiently and it can do this easily because the heavy lifting is handled off the device and on the cloud. And here's a question for you. Will this kind of gaming device reign at the top of the handheld gaming market in the future? Now, I know what I think, but I'm more interested in what you think. Is the G Cloud the future top G when it comes to portable gaming? So watch this video and let me know. And like Doc Brown once said, You're gonna see some serious shit. So let's start with Xbox Cloud Gaming. I've had this for around 10 days now and Gears of War 4 is mainly what I've been playing on it. I haven't played Gears of War since Gears of War 3 back in 2011 and I wasn't sure how I would feel playing such an epic game on a smaller screen like this. Most of my memories of playing Gears of War was on a 51 inch plasma back in the day. And do you know what? On the first day I set some time aside to really test out the G Cloud, I played Gears of War 4 to 3 a.m. in the morning whilst in bed with my Nothing Ear 2 earbuds connected so it passes the immersion test for me. In terms of performance of the stream, it is heavily dependent on the internet connection and the router you have and of course the game server itself. I did notice some stuttering and buffering at the beginning of playing a couple of the popular titles. For example, Assassin's Creed Origins seems to be very popular right now. If the server is busy, you might see some choppiness. But Gears of War 4 has run really smoothly for me, so I have to say I am impressed. You know what you need. You need a sleek, minimalistic wallet that can carry all your cards and money with you without the bolt. And if you go to theridge.com forward slash what gear right now, you won't need to look any further. And I've been using the black Damascus steel wallet for over a year now and I love it, but now I'm torn between the regular Damascus steel and also the Forge Pacific. And all of the Ridge wallets are made from high quality materials like aluminium, titanium, and carbon fiber. And they feature a unique design that protects your cards with RFID blocking technology. And if you like the style of the Ridge wallets, then you're also gonna love the Ridge rings. They're also made from premium materials like carbon and tungsten and titanium. And these rings are designed to withstand even the toughest of environments without compromising on fashion. And I personally like the carbon fiber one but you can choose from a variety of sleek and modern designs to find the perfect fit for your style. So go to theridge.com forward slash what gear for an exclusive 10% discount today. And one thing sure to ruin a cloud gaming experience is input response lag. Now I've heard people complain about this when it was launched six months ago. I've only just got it and I'm assuming Logitech have patched this now because during my gaming test of this, it's not been an issue. And take note of what I just said gaming test. It's the perfect excuse for gaming into the late hours of the night without upsetting the missus. Works every time. So now let's talk about a few of the other ways you can play the G Cloud if you don't want to sign up for a game streaming subscription. So you can use remote play if you own an Xbox or a PlayStation. The Logitech G Cloud has been designed with Xbox in mind. However, I did encounter some issues getting the PlayStation Remote Play app to recognize the G Cloud's controls. I did a bit of research on this and as far as I can tell, the only way to get around this is to install the PS Play app, which is a third party version of PS Remote Play. It does cost $5.99. And for the sake of testing this device properly, I had to spend the money. But you know what? It actually turned out to be a pretty good deal because not only can you do remote play, but you can also actually remote play even if you're not on the same network. It's a little bit tricky to set up, but it is possible. So if you go on holiday, potentially you could play your PS5 from your hotel room. So this app kind of lets you build your own cloud server to your PlayStation. And I must say the remote play works perfectly on this device. In fact, when I was testing remote play, I was sitting in front of the TV with the PlayStation connected to it and I could actually see the big screen and the small screen at the same time. And I had the speakers on on the G Cloud and I couldn't hear any audio delay between the device and my TV. So that tells me it's pretty damn good at remote play. Although with games like Call of Duty and stuff like that, the milliseconds really count. So I'm not sure you'd wanna use it for online gaming. You could, but you might not have the edge like you would on a monitor or something like that. Now, one question many people might have about cloud gaming devices like this is, what happens when I have no data, no Wi-Fi? Maybe I'm on a long haul flight and maybe it's Friday, ain't got no job, ain't got none of the other things I mentioned, and I ain't got 
to do. Well, based on the fact that the Logitech G Cloud at its core is an Android tablet, you could watch movies locally, you could download music and listen to it locally. And if you really wanted to, you can change the interface into tablet mode, which will make the UI look like your typical Android device. And of course, you could play Android games locally. And if you're looking for offline Android games to play on long flights and stuff like that, I did make a video about that. I'll link it at the end. Now keep this in mind, the G Cloud is good, but it does struggle a little bit with graphically demanding games such as Genshin Impact, for example. It can play it, but it won't run it at the maximum settings when it comes to graphics and refresh rates and all this kind of stuff. And if you do want to play Genshin Impact, the best way to play it on this device would be over a cloud streaming server. And there is something really cool that Logitech have added in their lab section buried within the settings. It's in the experimental stage right now, but it lets you map the controls of the G Cloud to pretty much any touch control game. So that could give you a massive advantage when it comes to gaming on Android. And another way to play games on the G Cloud is of course emulation. And for those of you not familiar with game emulators, you can download game emulator software from the Google Play Store that is Play Protect certified so it's safe to use. And these will allow you to play retro console games like Nintendo games, Sega, Dreamcast, 3DS, NDS, PS2, and even PSP. And all you need to do is source and download the ROMs onto the storage on the G Cloud to play them. I'll leave you guys to figure that out, but just keep this in mind. The G Cloud only has 64 gigabytes of storage on board. So you need to be mindful of how you're using it. But the good news is Logitech have added an SD card slot. So if you put your ROMs for your emulators on the SD card and the SD card's fast enough, you can play them directly from there. And when it comes to the performance of game emulation, generally speaking, the less demanding emulators like Game Boy, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, N64, NDS, they all run really smoothly. It gets a bit dicey once you start moving towards PS2 and PSP. However, my favorite emulator, the Dolphin emulator, does work reasonably well here running GameCube games. You can't max out the graphics or anything like that, but it's definitely playable. So if you want to, you can go back and play some of those legendary Nintendo titles like Zelda The Wind Waker and the Super Mario games. I also tested out the Drastic emulator here for 3DS games, and I like this one for this device particularly because the game file sizes are small and you can store hundreds of them on that 64 gigabyte storage that it's got built in without having to worry about the SD card. Trust me, if you get one of these and you do this and you find yourself without any Wi-Fi or data on a long flight, you could create a library of retro games that would undoubtedly keep you entertained for hours. But a little disclaimer when it comes to emulators, if you're gonna go with Dreamcast or PS2 or PSP, you really are gonna be redlining the system on chip. And that brings me nicely onto the system on chip, the heart and soul of this device. So Logitech have created the G Cloud primarily for cloud gaming. So its processor only really needs to be strong in two areas, graphics and connectivity. And that's probably why they chose the Snapdragon 720G it's not the newest, it's not the latest, it's not the greatest flagship from Qualcomm right now. That would be the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But the G in the 720G is for gaming and it supports 10-bit true HDR colors. And it's also got the Snapdragon X15 modem integrated into it. And that modem is Wi-Fi 6 ready. So it can connect to Wi-Fi 6 networks if they're available. And when you do, the data speeds will be incredible maxing out at 867 megabits per second. And this chip also brings Bluetooth 5.1 to the table with Aptex adaptive support. I made an entire video about that, but to keep it simple right now, you'll get great quality sound to your earbuds with minimal lag. And it's very robust when it comes to interference. So if you're on a plane, there's loads of other people around you with Bluetooth devices, you're not gonna notice any digital noise or drops in quality. And of course the chip is power efficient too. On its battery power can last up to 12 hours of continuous gaming, and that's a pretty big deal. So this thing does have speed and power where it counts. Let me tell you what I like about the G Cloud. And this is coming from someone who's been playing handheld consoles since the 80s. And I even worked in a computer game shop for many, many years. The screen is a perfect size for handhelds. And it's definitely one of the G Cloud's best features. It's a seven inch 1920 by 1080 resolution display, and it supports 60 Hertz. And that is the maximum resolution and maximum refresh rate that most game streaming services currently support. So it's up to screen and it is an IPS panel and it's easily bright enough for even the sunniest of days. Not that we get many of those here in England. And the speakers are also impressively loud and good quality. 
And if you follow the channel, you probably already know this, but I'm a fan of the headphone jack and this has one. And what this means for you is you could plug in a pair of headphones that never run out of power, even if you are gaming for 12 hours straight. So that's definitely something that I like. The ergonomics of the device, the grips, the textures, and the placement of the buttons make this easily one of the most comfortable handhelds out there right now. And I do like the additional buttons that they give you. These can be mapped in emulators to do specific things. And I'm a fan of the yellow accents that they've added to the sticks and to the switch on the top and the Logitech button here. And it's no surprise that the design of this has been well thought out because I heard the design team behind this are the same people that were behind some of Microsoft's first party Xbox designs. So I do like this device for right now. It's up to scratch in pretty much every department. But here are six things that I think could be improved on future versions of the G Cloud. We could see a more powerful chipset, maybe a Snapdragon 8 series with newer and larger capacity ROM and RAM. Maybe we'll see an AMOLED display with faster refresh rates, just in time for when game streaming services start offering faster refresh rates and higher resolutions. And since the Snapdragon 720G does support 5G, it would have been nice to have seen a SIM tray here as an option for better connectivity when you're on the go. And I know many people who are in the market for handheld gaming devices would definitely like to see a few more options when it comes to offline gaming. Maybe something even as simple as an offline retro gaming catalog stored locally on the device would solve that problem. But like I said earlier in this video, if you know what you're doing when it comes to game emulation, you can right now turn the G Cloud into maybe one of the greatest retro gaming handheld devices out there today. And that for me is gonna be the use case for when I'm completely off the grid with no Wi-Fi, no data, no nothing. I'm probably gonna be playing some Zelda Ocarina of Time. But here's something important not to forget. The Logitech G Cloud is brilliant for what it was built to do, as long as the clouds align for you. And that brings me back to the question from the beginning of the video. Will this kind of gaming device reign at the top of the handheld gaming market in the future? Let me know your thoughts on that and genuinely interested to know. And if you guys are interested in picking one of these now, there'll be a live link to where you can get the best deal below this video. And I appreciate you guys for watching this one. Let me know what you think of the G Cloud. And if you want to check out those offline games or learn about emulation, there's a couple of thumbnails on screen right now. If you check those out, I will see you in the next one.